people. I'm Aaron Ryan. Welcome to the Big Brother Finale preview interview. Tonight I'm talking to all grand finalists, Taras, Reggie and Johnson. This interview is with Johnson. He's like the kid with a golden ticket in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. He has attentively watched previous seasons of Big Brother. He has plotted, he has strategized, and he awaited his big moment to be on Big Brother. And how fitting to do it. Uh, with some of the names he has idolised over the years. So, Johnson, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you. What an introduction. Yeah. Lord, that was phenomenal. Give me the golden ticket already. Absolutely. Actually, I, I had a first question for you, but I, I'm going to just throw this, this one in. Has anyone compared you to Carbo from Pack to the Rafters? Or have you ever oh, if- that show? If only my eyebrows were just as nice. No, I'm kidding. I get it all the time. I get. I, I scroll through social media and I don't even see my name that often. I see Pack to the Rafters more often than I see my name. Uh, kind of getting sick of it. Stop drawing similarities and just tell just uh, just tell me I'm handsome already. That's it. I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Okay, so let's tell me about tell me about that moment just seconds before you're about to enter the Big Brother house for the first time. Oh, what can I say? Jeez. It all led it all led to that one moment. I mean, I've loved Big Brother for for as long as I can remember. Um, and everything led up to that split second as Sonia said, go in. Your Big Brother journey starts now. And those doors open and I'm actually feeling numb. I feel numb. You actually don't feel anything when you walk into the house Um, and you walk in and it's just futuristic. The house looks incredible. Big brother knows how to set one up and put, (laughs) and put one together. He's got a couple of good tradies, which is good to hear. Um, That split second, numb. I've got, I've got no feelings. No, I'm just overcome with just joy, like super joy. And I'm wearing my favourite denim jacket. So I was like, you know what? This is so fitting. This is fitting. So you're in there. I'm sure all of your expectations are met. Um, You've arrived. It's your moment. And then OG started filling the house. How surreal was that? Oh, look. You you didn't know, did you? No, I had no idea. Had no idea. Nothing. Zilch, nada. (laughs) So for me, it was like, I'm in a house with the people that I watched with housemates and royalty that I voted to win Big Brother. How incredible is this? Number one. My second thought was the people that I voted to win are now in the house with me that I have to go up against. (laughs) So it was like bittersweet. And I knew the second that the OGs came in, I go, this is going to be split in half. They just, they, they're, they're so incredible. They were so powerful from the get-go. And when they spoke, the house stopped. And as newbies, we felt like we were on the back foot straight away. Mm. We felt like Australia, I mean, I already knew, I already knew all, the, all the OGs returning. So for me, it was like I already knew their character. I already knew who they were, what they stood for. No one in Australia knows who I am and who I stand for, you know. So for me, I was like, geez, this is going to be a tough one. Well, they know who you are. You're Carvo from Pack to the Rafters, remember? <laughs> no. Yeah, you need to stop that. You need to stop that. <laughs> as, well, as you're well aware, um, what you, you see on air is obviously an edited version, you know, of the mm-hmm. show. So you don't get yep. to see all of someone's personality or yep. or they could be portrayed differently to how people know them on the outside. So you mm-hmm. had impressions of people like Reggie, of Tim, Dave, and, and all that kind of stuff based on what you saw. So mm-hmm. when you met them and you're in the Big Brother house, was that different to what your perception was or was it the same? I think for most of them it was the same. Um, bar one, uh, look, and uh, I've, I've, I've stood by this. In, I posted something like last week or whatever it was about Tim saying that, Aussies knew him for being, you know, brutally honest, um, nothing but himself, uh, the laughing larrikin with the curly hair. I got to know Tim for Tim. Mm. When you're spending pretty much 
you know, almost two months in a house, 50 something days, whatever it was, when you're spending that much time with someone every single day, you can't, you kind of get sick of talking about strat and you want to know more about the person. Mm. And I think Tim and I really got down to who we were as people. And I think that's why we, we, we really got on really well, both as, as really close mates, but also as, as like, players in the game because we both had respect and honor for each other watching it watching to, watching the 2013 season i honestly i probably would have thought he probably would have never had these conversations with me mm. but tim is raw tim is real tim is himself and that's what i love about him yeah um and honestly estelle reg dave absolutely beautiful people themselves um but that was i guess that's the one that stands out to me of those four, then you get your Layla's, your Drews, your Tullys, your Trevors, um, you know, and and they're all what I thought they were going to be. Um, their their characters or them, because because I think the previous seasons, um, or, or or their ones had, um, them, and you got to know them, whereas. This new style of Big Brother with a new format, it's very uh, strategic based, very gameplay. You're in survival mode. Yeah. It's not like the previous seasons where you got to know them and who they were. Well, speaking of strategy, in what I could see, um, you know, from you is all those moves are going through your mind. You're accounting for every scenario and you were meticulously thinking through every move. However, it seems that when you were nominated each time, you kind of panicked and then got really annoyed and wow, you know, and you kind of went into some sort of like, did you not take into account getting nominated? <laughs> nominated? Uh, no, yes. Yes, I did. Obviously I did, but not by my mates. Uh, it's yeah. so, so hard, right? It is a game and I, I, I absolutely get it. It looks like I'm frantic and I, run around the house and I'm doing kilometers and I'm doing, you know, I've got my steps up. I've hit 20,000 steps just in 45 minutes. And yeah, but that was me, you know, yeah. for me, it was a game and I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave the game. And it was more than just like, it's, it's more than just a game. You know, for me, it was every, like, it's everything I ever want. It's everything I ever wanted um, to be in there. And it felt like I was, Immor like almost immortal. Like I felt like, although yes, I knew there was a life outside the house, it almost felt like there wasn't. Mm. It felt like nothing else, nothing else existed. Yeah. Because that's all you knew in the house. So every time you get nominated, it felt like <clears throat> yes, it's a game, but it felt like like I was about to be um executed. That's what yeah. it felt like to me. Um, because I'm so passionate as well, and I'm so driven and very competitive i don't like losing mm. that's that's also that's all i think that's also what comes into it um my drive my passion for the game and my competitive nature i can't help it that's me well right towards the end um it seemed like it was a you and alicia versus reggie and taras kind of thing and you even said you or alicia or brendan had to win or you would be going home knowing that how come you didn't do I guess more strategy, uh, strategy, you know, with Taras, knowing that he's the challenge beast and he very much could win. Would it have been good to keep him on side, you know, if he wins? Absolutely. Absolutely. However, I knew that Taras's gameplay did not include me in it. Mm. I knew that Taras had others before me because. Um, of the number of times that he put me up, uh, he never wanted to put Reggie up, never wanted to put Alicia up, you know, only to squeeze me out. Mm. So for me, yes, but I was, I was, Taras and I were actually very close to the game, like mm. as, as friends, as mates. And we got to know each other on a deeper level as well. But the second it came to gameplay, Taras, his thing was, I can't, I, I I'm actually humbled to be playing with someone like you. 
Mm. Kira said to me, I like you have played this game incredibly. The fact that you've been the most nominated housemate, I don't get it. I don't get how you're still here. Mm. Um, and it, aside from all the strategy, there is social there, like there's a massive social game, and there's also um, like commitment to the game. Why did I team up with Alicia and Brenton? Um, because I knew that that I knew that I was their number ones. And the, the term number ones is is a very like is a term that we use in the house or that we use in the house to talk about, you know, who you would take regardless, hell or high waters to the end. Who would you take? I knew Lisa would take me, I knew Brenton would take me, and I knew I would take them too. The second that I felt, I felt an energy change the second that Tim left, and I felt it. Taras wanted me gone. I yeah. felt it. I felt it, but I still had faith in him and I don't know why. I still trusted him and I don't know why. Um, but that was, yeah, that was, um, that's why I chose Leish and, and Brenton, I guess. It's not to say that I didn't play the game with, with Taras and Reggie because I wouldn't have got as far as I did, I guess. Um, so, yeah. That's, so, so you got to the, to the top four. And then Taras yes. won. He, he had to pick, obviously, between yourself, Brenton, or Reggie to go home. Now, I think mm -hmm. Reggie was safe, and, and it was absolutely clear he was going to evict you. Now, to be honest, and this is in support of um, how popular you are with the Australian public, for Taras's game, he absolutely would have been better off evicting you and keeping Brenton. He has very much risked now... Um, you know, the winning of $250,000 by evicting Brenton and keeping you. Um, by your face uh, in that episode, you were obviously very surprised he picked you. So Shocked. Why do you think Taras did this? Because it's not good for his game. Hang on. <laughs> Day 61 in the house, I was his target. He squeezed me. Well, he aimed to squeeze me out with, with Alicia next to me, my best friend next to me. He went and shook everyone's hand and tried to get rid of me. Day 62, after he won the challenge, I was convinced I was going home. Convinced. I said to myself, he wanted me gone yesterday. He told me he doesn't want to be standing at the top three finale standing next to me. Um, he wants me gone. And when Sonia says, with one vote, it's time to go Brenton. The look on Brenton's face mm. was a mirror image of mine. Why do I think he did it? I think Taras, although being, although being a, very, a very strong competitor in challenges, his game, his game I don't think really came to life, obviously, towards the back end. Mm. His game... Is superb, very strong player as well. Why did he choose me? I asked him the same question. What, why? Why did you choose me? And I think why he did it is because him and I really, really, really had more than just a friendship. We had yeah. more than just mates in the house. And I think that's what struck a chord. I think he knew that I needed to, he felt like I needed to be at the end. Because I played so hard and I worked so hard and I was the most nominated housemate. Mm. But for his game, was it the best thing? Potentially. Australia might turn around and say, geez, you know, you know that, like, that was a good play. Mm. Is it too little too late? I don't know. Well, we'll um, yeah. We'll, we'll ask, on, I'll, I'll ask Taras that question. Um, so we'll, we'll ask him that directly and that'll be in another podcast. But um, Johnson, I, I want to ask you, this is just a serious question and, and it's difficult, but the Australian audience are wondering this. So I have to ask, if it was say yourself, Alicia and Taras or Brenton type of scenario at the end, then yep. you would, you'd all pitch your reasons why the, you know, the Aussie audience should vote for you. The viewers would have their favourites and vote accordingly, and that would be that. However, you do have Reggie in there. Now, Australia knows her background from her, her previous season and why yep. she's doing this season and yep. what the money would do for, for her and her kids. Now, you've always been yep. a big supporter of Reggie and have been gracious and humble in terms of her experience. 
Yep. You, you still have an opportunity to win and compete for $250,000 prize. So my question yep. is, what is your pitch to me? Because I'm a viewer as well, you know, that has a vote um, for mm -hmm. me to, to vote for you over Reggie. Now, obviously, I do understand how to over Reggie. Is. Okay, so not so so for me and well, I only get one vote, so I you know that's right. So, yeah. so whoever I vote for, it's going to be over the other two. It doesn't matter who the other two are. So I mean, yeah, I, do, right. I, yeah. I do understand how difficult that question is, but I mean, it's the elephant in the room. Why it why, is. Should, why should we vote for you? And you're like, as I said, the Willy Wonka chocolate and the fact that like the whole thing and the whole Johnson story, which is beautiful, but knowing what Reggie's story is, how how do you pitch that? Great question. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of time to think about this, um, but we can, you cannot look past, you cannot look past um, how loved Reggie is. I mean, I'd be the first person to put my hand up and say like Queen Reggie, there is yeah. no denying. It. There is absolutely no denying. It. And I take nothing away from Reggie. I take nothing away from her and I'm, but I'm here to talk about my game, my experience and, and what the money could do for me and my family. Walking into the house, I said that I wanted to play a big game. Uh, and from the get go, I was, I was, I was a big player, a shark. I, I took, I took another big shark in the game, uh, head on Tim. And I said, Tim, as opposed to going head to head, let's work side by side shows my gameplay. It shows my bold moves. Yes, it is a game. And I nominated myself in house nominations on week. Guys, nominate me. Putting myself in the firing line and seeing what the response is from the, from the housemates, from the people. I was so, in the house. I was so loyal to those who are loyal to me. So integral to those who are integral to me. And so trustworthy to those who are trustworthy to me. I had a target on my back from the, from the second I walked in there. But for someone who has watched the show from the tender age of six and seven, mm. it's not just making it's not just making my dream today. It's making that young boy's dream then. Yeah, I can't wait to share the photo of me standing next to two thousand two eviction chair. People to date don't particularly. I don't know if they do or they do understand. Like my family, I came down, this is hilarious. I came down stairs last weekend and my parents were watching Tim's finale <laughs> on Sunday. Yeah. That's the, sort of, that's the sort of people we are. We, we've loved Big Brother from day dot. And for me to, to be a super fan, to make it to the end is an achievement. But to take out one of the biggest Big Brothers, the greatest Big Brother of all time, it would mean, it would, it would, nod to all boys and girls, children, what have you out there. If you've got a dream, stick to it. Do it. Back yourself because I've proven to you all that you can do it too. Aside from that, what would the money do for me? My parents have, my parents have, have worked nonstop, absolutely nonstop. And you know, we are, we are, we are where we are today. I am where I am today because of my parents. Everyone saw them come into the house and everyone saw what they meant to me. You know, I, I have so much love and respect for my parents. I want to take them away. I want to take them somewhere far where they don't have to worry about life, where they don't have to worry about paying the bills, where they don't have to worry about work. For God's sake, they are, they are, they're so wired to work. They are so wired to just constantly be, be working and focus on paying this and paying that. Just take a break. Yeah. And last but not least, this is probably the most important one for me. Before and during the house and also now, I said to my brother and I texted him actually, I said, if I make it to the end and, and if I win $250,000, I'm giving half of it to you. Mm. And everyone's like, everyone was like, why? Why would you give it to your brother? He's done nothing. Like he didn't, he didn't endure 62 days in the house, stress, losing my hair, going dark, losing weight, playing the game. He didn't. But what he's endured is the 25, 26 years of my life, which is what he's taught me today. And my brother's been through so much, so much, so many hurdles in his life. 
And he stood up to them and go, no, I can do this. And, like, it'll probably be for another time. I don't particularly want to talk about my brother's concerns with, you know, with his health and stuff. But I want to give back because as a family, you lose together. But when one of us win, we all win. Yeah. Well, well said. I mean, people that are listening to this podcast, obviously it's an audio podcast, but um, I can actually see um, Johnson. Um, everything that comes through is very, very genuine. Um, I just, we haven't got too long left. Um, I just, I guess, want to ask you about, you know, you're reflecting back on, on Big Brother. Is the whole thing just a great experience or can you actually think of specific highlights for you for, for Big Brother 2022? Oh. Uh. I never want it to end, Aaron, honestly. I never, I never want it to end. And I never, I never thought it was going to end. But now that it's over, now that it's up, um, I guess, I think there were 13 or 14 of us left in the house. And someone, I think Jewel, no, just before Jules, I think it was Sam, had just got evicted. Um, or Lulu. And... Reggie loves calling the spa the monkey spa. Who knows what happens in there? Let's leave it for the house. But there was 13 or 14 of us in the spa all at the one time, being ourselves, having fun. Yeah. That moment for me was just like an eye-opening experience because it was like halfway through the game, I'm in the Big Brother house with all these housemates, OGs, newbies, the, the, the spa's hot. And the energy was flowing and we were all happy. Yeah. That moment for me was probably like a standout for me. Reggie never got in. Dave never got in because it was the monkey spa. And there was probably no room, to be honest. But that for me was, was joy, was pure joy, pure happiness. Yeah, and I guess that's, that's probably one of the stands out for me. It's probably second to making it to the end. Bloody hell. Yeah. Let's course. be real here. Let's bloody be real. Let's bloody be real. Make it to the end. And how, how difficult was it for you keeping everything a secret? Because the difference between you and obviously a lot of other previous seasons is it was live. So, but you've had to keep the fact that you're in the, the final three um, from a lot of people for a long time. <laughs> how hard was yeah. that? Because you're so excited. Mate, yeah. Mate, I went back to work because my bloody annual leave ended. So I went straight back to work. I went straight back to work or leave without pay, I think it was. Yeah. I went straight back to work. I had no choice. And going back to work, I was just like, you guys have no idea what I've been through. Um, but I'm a vault. I'm an absolute vault. What you say to me stays with me. And um, it was so hard because um, just living my everyday life as, as, as Johnson. And, I'm, uh, and I am your everyday guy. You know, I, I, I am your... I, go to work and all that sorts of stuff. We, we are like when we're not any different to you or I are like, we are normal people, Yeah. but keeping it a secret, geez, it was so hard. I almost slipped up a couple of times, but I was like caught myself in the act. <laughs> so hard, but so hard. All right, Johnson, you were the big brother fans player. You respected the game. You played the perfect mi mixture of head and heart. And I think, the universe just set it up nicely that you ended up in the top three. You definitely deserve it. Well done. Good luck for the finale. It's only 24 hours uh, twenty four hours away. And thank you for joining me tonight. You are an absolute gem, mate. Thank you so much. Love you all. All right. That was Johnson, grand finalist of Big Brother 2022. That's it for tonight. Thank you for listening. I'm Aaron Ryan. Check out the other two podcasts with Taras and Reggie on Acast. Enjoy the finale and good night.